This video provides some instructional help for Lab 1. Here I'm using a, an online R compiler. You could use R Studio or any other um, R compiler. So let's clean things up a little bit here and be ready to get to work. When you're doing R, when you're doing statistics, you're often interested in a list of of data values. Maybe you're measuring st uh, students' grades, or measure, maybe you're measuring heights and weights of people. Maybe you're keeping track of, of people's eye color or their names or some other categorical variable. So in all these cases, we've got these lists of data. R handles lists of data very effectively. R calls these lists vectors. So let's build a vector in R. I'm going to call it X. I'm going to call it the object X. In R you use a less than and a minus sign that kind of makes a little arrow. That means the stuff on the right hand side I'm going to store in this object on the left hand side. We're going to use a command in R, a function called concatenate. It's just a C, and then inside of parentheses, I list the particular variables that we're interested in. For right now, let's say that we, uh, that we looked at five students' grades on some test. So maybe the first student got 85, the next one got 82, the next one got 86, and the next one got 79, and another student got 91. So we've got this sample of five students and their uh, grades on, on a test. So R has created this object X. If I ask R to tell me what that X is, then, and then I can execute that script, then sure enough, X are those particular values. Once we have some numerical values studied, stored in a vector, there's just a whole ton of stuff that we can do. For example, we might want to add up all of the things that are in that vector. Let's execute that script now. So the script executes, it builds this object X with these uh, five numbers in it. We ask it to show us what X was, so there are the five numbers, and then we ask for the sum of those that added up those values. Now we might want to find the average of those five numbers. That is, we want to add them up and then divide by how many there are. Uh, we can do that quite easily in R. Already we've shown how to add them up. Let's, uh, let's do something more here. Let's, let's build an object N. I'm not sure that it's necessary to do all of that, but I, well, Let's do this. Let's just find out what the length of n is. Of course, uh, the length of x, I'm sorry. And execute that script. Okay, so now what we've done, we've built this object x. We ask R to print out what x was. We ask it to add everything up in, in x, and we ask what the length of x is. Now, of course, this is very small. We could have just counted that by hand. But if we've got a very large vector, it's kind of handy to have this command length which will tell us how many things are there. And so we could find the average by looking at the sum of all the x's divided by how many there are. So let's execute that script. Oops, I'm sorry. There was my error. I hadn't built an object x, and <laughs> I wanted the, the length to be the length of x not of n, so let's execute that. So there's our, our vector, there's our the sum, there's the length, and uh, there's the, uh, the average. It might be handy for us to, I've, I really don't necessarily want those things printed out. I'm going to make something called x bar, which I'm going to call that average. Now, in, uh, in statistics, they don't call what we've always called the average, add everything up and divide by how many there are. Um, they call that a mean. 
And so if this X bar is going to be the mean of that sample. Uh, so, so now let's just look and see what the script looks like. Execute that script. So all that it does now is it builds that vector X. It calculates this X bar. I didn't ask it to print out X bar at that point, but then I did in the next line. And so it tells us that that, that average or the mean is 82.6. All right, now watch some interesting things. Suppose, let me take that part of the script out. Let's take 2 times x. And let's execute that script. Now notice what it does. It actually just 2 times each of the values in that vector. So 150 is 2 times 75, 164 is 2 times uh, 82, and so on. Okay, we could do other things with that vector. We could square each of the values in the vector. Execute that script. So 75 squared is that great big number and, and so on. So we could do something like add up all of those x squareds, the sum of the x squareds. Um, execute that. There's the x squareds and then we added all of those up. Now notice that that would be something uh, very different than looking at, uh, at the sum of the x's and then squaring that amount. So we're going to add up all of those values and then square that amount. Okay, so those two calculations uh, do some different things. Let's talk about some notation here for a minute. This particular idea of the sum of the x squareds is, is written in the following way. That is, we use the following kind of notation. We could look at the sum. Okay, that's the uh, capital s Greek letter sigma. The sum of the x squareds. So the order of operation is that we're going to square each one of the x's and then we're going to add them up. On the other hand, this value is going to be the sum of all the x's. And then after we've done that, after we've added those up, we're going to square that amount. Okay, So we'll need to translate between this shorthand algebra notation for doing calculations and the uh, script notation that we'll use in R. So let's return to the idea of the average or what statisticians call the mean. Standard notation for the mean of a sample is x bar. and That's the symbol that we use in x bar. Of course in R we need to write that out as x bar. The shorthand algebra notation for x bar is the sum of all the x's divided by n, which is the symbol that we'll use for the, for the length of that uh, vector, the number of elements in the vector. So if you remember, we executed that, that code in the following way. We said x bar will be assigned the value of the sum of all the x's divided by n, or the length of the vector. An important concept that we'll look at in one of the subsequent chapters is the idea of sample variance. Sample variance is defined as the sum of all of the x's minus x bar quantity squared. You take the x minus the x bar, each one of the x's, subtract x bar from it, square that amount, then add all of that up, and then divide by n minus 1. Of course, we can, can execute that, uh, that formula in, in R quite easily. To execute this uh, formula, I'm going to need to know the length of the, of the sample, the n. So I'm going to create an object called n because I, I'll need to use it a couple of times. I'll need to use it to find the x bar and I'll need to use it in this formula as well. 
because we have now defined what n is, I can just use n here uh, to calculate that, that x bar. So to execute this formula, I need to look at the sum of all the x's minus x bar divided by n minus 1. So what I want you to see is that that executes this formula. It takes the x minus the x bar, then it adds all of, oops, I was supposed to square that amount. So hang on, I've got to, to edit that because I've got to take all of that and square it before I do the sum. Okay, so I'm going to sum up a bunch of things in x minus x bar quantity squared all divided by n minus 1. So kind of study that formula, that kind of notation, and see how that translates to this R formula. So there's my script. I've got the vector. I looked at the length of the vector. I find the, the mean of that vector. We calculated the variance of that vector, and then I ask it to print out what that variance is. If we execute that, then the variance is 38.3 in this case. R will be very helpful for us in translating some very sometimes complicated formulas into calculations um, on a particular vector of data. Okay, more details about that are in the instructions in the lab. Good luck.